Hello again, and welcome to Mobile Music Thursday. I'm Jason Jones, your host, and this week we have another fantastic guest that I'm really excited about having on the show. Someone that I've had the pleasure of knowing for years, and I always look forward to getting to know better, uh, of great accomplishment in the industry and has made a big difference in the industry as well. As well as, besides running a large uh, company called Elite Entertainment out of New Jersey, with many uh, DJs that uh, work in the company under him, he also has never stopped being an active DJ himself going out and performing and entertaining at events and staying up with music has a passion and a love for music he's never lost why he does this in the first place as he's built uh, this company he's also uh, you may have seen him in the circles at conferences and doing trainings if uh, he has got a great program on how to have a successful multi entertainer operation uh, called Mike Walter training and that's available online as well as doing a speaking at DJ conferences and seminars on that topic and other topics as well Plus, he's done motivational speaking around health and wellness because he is what I would classify as a health nut, and that is a compliment, actually. Someone who, you know, works out, takes care of himself, and that sort of thing that uh, we always uh, we always admire and think like, oh, I should really be more like that too. And he's kind of that that space saying everybody can do it and uh, and, and enjoy those uh, those benefits. Plus, there's probably other amazing accomplishments that, uh, that Mike has that I'm leaving off the board. He's a writer for the Dish Jockey News, and, uh, and if I think of other things, I'll just pop them in this interview as we talk throughout uh, the thing, see if I can embarrass Mike. Mike, welcome to Mobile Music Thursday. It's a real pleasure to have Thank you here. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having me. And, and can we? Can I just start uh, right off the top? You mentioned my health. Uh, I don't know how many people who tune into this know that you uh, have undergone a great transition in your life and something you should be very proud of uh, and something I hope that uh, other people find as a, a motivation. You quit smoking, uh, is it a year ago? Yes, a little over a, little over a year ago. That's I applaud that, Jason. I really do. I, I think smoking is uh, such a harmful thing to do to your body as well as your wallet. It's so mm-hmm. damn expensive. And uh, I remember the day you put it up on Facebook that you were quitting, and uh, and I, I think I called you like a week after. And I said, "Are you still? Have you had a cigarette? I hope not." You said no, and I, I'm I'm so happy about that. And you said. You're going to be running a 5K. You training for? Yes, yes. No, you were you were a huge a huge inspiration and well, a huge stand for, for that. Credit. I give you a hundred percent of the credit. You did it, uh, and you proved it's not impossible. So, if anyone's tuning into this, we're, we'll talk about music in a second. But if you're a smoker, please use Jason as a as a role model here uh, and a, a motivation. It can be done. Quick. Yes. Pack yep. out now. Uh, it's, it's not as hard as you think it is. Right. It's not right. nearly as hard as, as you think it is at all. Um, so in that, in, in what the, the training for the 5K, uh, like a year, so we celebrated one year of not smoking. And one of the things that uh, Kelly and I used to do together all the time is smoke. It was a big social thing, right? Like, let's go have a smoke together. That was a big together thing. And so just recently, we talked and said, well, why don't we make working out a together thing? You know, right. then then it's like let's oh. go running together, and that's together oh. time. So it's like it's not like oh another run. Are we going to do our run? It's like well we don't want to miss out on together time. Let's go yeah. run, or you know are let's you, go and, and be active together. Are you married to a Kelly? I am married to a Kelly. Yes. I, well, so am I. So let's make sure people understand. We uh, <laughs> which Kelly we're talking Kelly. about? <laughs> uh, yeah, right. My Kelly has never smoked nor run with you, so. Uh, we should probably just clarify that. That's that's true. That I know of, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. The secret yeah. safe with me. Right, right. Anyway, um, so uh, so so true. So yes. Yeah, so getting on the uh, getting on the jogging yeah. bandwagon and going to run a five k and uh, and uh, have a, have a reason to get out there and uh, and and just be active. So thanks for that inspiration and for the acknowledgement. I appreciate it. Well, so now on to the music, and um, I had asked you to prepare some specialized things because on this show, what we like to do is we like to talk. about about a lot of the newer stuff, you know, what's what's coming out and what is something that we want to start introducing at weddings. Because one of the big things with weddings is often familiarity, you know, not necessarily a good testing ground to throw out a whole bunch of brand new music that people aren't aware of or really, really familiar with or really, really popular. And a song that may be really popular on the charts may not be a really great dance song. Or it could be a weird thing like Lord, where they just go out and sing along to it and really like it uh, anyway. So uh, what I like to talk about is what's working for you, the songs that are try- that you're trying, and the things uh, that uh, that are happening. And so I always like to open every show by talking about uh, new music. And uh, basically, this is kind of the 
play or don't play part of the show where I go down some of the most popular current music and uh, and then you can just give me an idea if that's something that you're playing, something you have introduced, something you've thought of, you know, or you kind of or not even touched uh, to okay. give others an idea that are out there and uh, looking at what they should be introducing and what they what they shouldn't. Okay. So first song would be Fancy by Iggy Azalea. Play or don't play? Um, ha- haven't, haven't broken it into my show yet, no. Haven't it haven't included yet. How about uh, uh, been out there a little bit longer? Problem by Ariana Grande. Uh, I think I played it once as a request. Uh, didn't blow up my dance floor, uh, so uh, it's probably something I would wait until I start getting more requests for. Sure, right. So it's like so the response was really lukewarm at best. Yeah, right. Okay, and then right. uh, slow song. Gosh, it's like how can you miss when the really strong slow song comes out? All of me by John Legend. Well, not only the slow song, but um, I've been doing the Tiesto remix uh, of that. Oh. And, uh, and that's working great because, you know, people know the lyrics mm-hmm. and, and they can sing along. So uh, I've actually been playing both at my events. I've been playing it, the, the one that we know as the slow song and then later in the night in a club set putting in the remix. I'm kind of bringing it back, almost like a callback. Yeah. Like, oh, I like this again, only it's different. Yeah. Right. That's a great idea, a really great idea. Um, how about uh, Turn Down for What by Little John oh, yeah. and DJ Snake? That's funny. I, got a, I did a um, corporate party back in uh, mid-December, Big, a uh, lot of young uh, people at it, and they asked for that song, and I had never heard of it. Uh-huh. So I look, on my, I look on my promo onlys. It hadn't come out yet. Right. I literally downloaded it onto my iPad, played it, listened to it first, said, well, I don't know, is it going to work or not? Played it, <laughs> and it was one of the best songs of the night. Wow. Um, so, you know, you have to have the right crowd for it. If you have too older, uh, too much of an older crowd at a wedding, it might not go over that well. Uh, but if you've got a hip-hop type crowd, uh, it's it, it's been working for me for months. That's awesome. That's yeah. really awesome to hear. Uh, because it's also, it's, uh, it's more of, of the hip-hop tunes, it's more abrasive. Too, right. uh, which I always I always think of like I mean if it's a happy hip hop tune then sometimes you can fit it in with a broader range of ages, right. but if it's a little bit more abrasive then generally more of a younger crowd are going to get really really worked up about it. It seems right. to me anyway. Right. So how about Jason Derulo's Wiggle? Uh, I know I've played it maybe once or twice. Did it kill? I don't remember. I don't remember whether it killed. You or probably not. would have remembered. I, <laughs> I think it's probably. For for me and my guess, it's probably hasn't broken yet. Do we? Do you go live with this right away? Um, will people be watching this? We should we should say right now it's June what, eighteenth. Yeah, so, no, it, uh, this will air tomorrow this night. A month from now, that 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 opinion might be outdated on that song. But yeah, right now it just hasn't broken views for me. Right. Well, and you know, and and it may or, as far as a participation song, it may or may not. You know, right. you just you just never know. You never know how that's that's going to go, and it never really struck me as particularly it's more pandering than it is like really catchy. Like some of the right. other, uh, follow along dance songs that, uh, right. that have come out. Um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up happy. I feel like I don't have to, like if, if you're not playing happy, you should be, but h- how about happy? And, and more importantly, like, where are you using it? Uh, I, I've been using it at the end of a dance set because it is a v- very high energy. Uh, I noticed some people will even do a swing dance to it. Oh, cool. Uh, it's kind of got that, that tempo to it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, how could you not be playing that song? I mean, right. it's, it's the song. I mean, what was it? Number one for like two and a half months. Um, everyone knows it. And I mean, what better message at a, at a wedding than, than happy. I just think it's, uh, yeah, I'm sure everyone listening to this has broken that song and, and is using it. Yeah, it, it really uh, it really suits uh, just the event and the occasion like perfectly. You don't often get them sync up to sync up that right. way because you don't want to be. I think it'll have legs too. I think that song two years from now mm-hmm. would, would is still going to work. Yes, know? definitely. I would yeah. agree with that. Uh, how about the, now Rude by Magic is an interesting song because it's like the whole song is like, why are you so rude? Well, I'll marry you anyway, right. which is right. a kind of funny. And some people might be sensitive like, oh, gosh. But have you have you had any requests for that or is that something I you've attempted? And, and when I listen to a song that that isn't the most positive song in the world, I kind of put it uh, in that I'll play it once I start getting requests for it. Right. I, I would rather, you know, maybe I overanalyze lyrics too much, but uh, you know, for example, when when people come up to me, and this is an older song, but when people come up to me and ask for "You've Lost That Loving Feeling," uh, which I know, you know, from the movie has a great moment to it, I usually don't like to play that at a wedding. I just I think that the, you know I don't think it's a great message to play at a wedding. So 
uh, I do kind of analyze the lyrics a little bit. Sure, sure. sure. Well, yeah. that, you know, and that's uh, that's you know having a philosophy about that uh, as right. well. You know, which makes a, which makes a difference because then you kind of know you kind of know where you're coming from with uh, with your choices rather than like I'll just throw anything out there sort of thing. Right. Um, the song "Am I Wrong" by Nico and Vince, um, kind of dancey, kind of in between, but getting a lot of airplay. I think like a lot of uh, songs like that, I'm waiting for a really good remix. Um, sometimes that's what I find I need anyway. Uh, a to to be able to beat a song in because I like to be able to beat a song into a mix, and I'm I'm not great at beating acapellas and things like that. So uh, if Full Tilt or one of the other services comes out with a really good remix of something like that, uh, I probably will start working it in. Uh, I don't know if this, you're going to get to this on your list, but I just got a hold of a, a great remix of Sing uh, by Ed Sheeran, and and that's. Um, probably i'm going to start working that into dance sets for that reason now that i finally have a good remix of it sure because it's a popular song but it doesn't have any any beat to it it's a kind of an energy killer just as it is right so all right and then how about uh, dark horse by katie perry that's been around for quite a while now yeah, kind too, of moving up me, on the familiarity too, it's too downbeat I, I like something a little bit more up tempo i i don't tend to get a, a lot of crowds that are into that hundred bpm slower hip-hop type vibe so um, I never really got it, got my hands on a good uh, up tempo remix of it, and just I played it a couple times for requests, but but it hasn't been a huge uh, dance floor killer for me. Okay, great. I've got a couple of questions about a couple of songs that have been around for a little bit, a little while, but have been kind of prognosticated that these are going to be, you know, these are going to explode and blow up. So I like to ask every DJ that I talk to about these, like what, what's okay. happening on his dance floor to see if reality matches at all. So right. uh, Chainsmokers came out with Selfie, uh, right. which is a, you know, kind of electronic with uh, with voice drops and, and that sort of thing. So uh, are you are you doing something with Selfie activity wise or just kind of playing it as a request? or are you getting much traction with it or are you not playing it at all well I, i'll tell you two ways i'm using it first of all if i do play it in a dance set it's it's one verse and out it's the song can get very annoying uh it's very repetitious which is which is probably one of the reasons why it, it hooked um i'll play it up until the but first let me take a selfie part and then get out of it uh, but i had a bridal party recently at a bride and groom want to um use it for their bridal party introductions mm. and their uh, bridesmaids and ushers came in with their cell phones and, and each one of them took a couple steps onto the dance floor, took a selfie and then continued. And so I made a remix for them or not a remix. That's probably the wrong uh, word, just an edit. an edit. So it was constantly the up tempo part. And just every once in a while, she'd say, but first, let me take a selfie. And then it uh, came and that worked. That worked great. And then I've actually since then, I've recommended that to a couple of brides. Sure. When, when they're not sure. And I think I've used it maybe uh, twice since then. Um, that's really fun. So that's that's worked well for me. Yeah, that's really fun. So yeah. less much, less as a hook song and more as something that you can tie an activity to. Yeah. that's thematic and fun. You know what it reminded me of when I first heard it? Remember the song, I'm going to have the date wrong on this, but maybe 15 years ago, I'm Blue. I'm Blue, ba da dee da da dee Do you remember that? You're too young for that. Oh, I'm gonna, um, beings that I don't remember, I think I'll confess that I'm too young. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, when I first heard Selfie, it reminded me of that, because that song, Blue, was extremely annoying and extremely <laughs> repetitive. But I remember it coming out, I think, to, towards the beginning of a December, and I probably played it at every holiday party I did. Uh, for that month and then it burned out and I never played it again but it, selfie kind of reminded me of that when I first heard it it was a hook but it was a hook that could you know you could torture prisoners with it right know. yeah it had it had yeah. its moment and then it's done kind of right. thing uh, it was a, like more of a timely, a timely thing. Well, I'm going to have to look up Blue now and see if I go, oh, that one. Because honestly, Mike, I forget more great songs than I can ever, ever remember. Right, right. Um, so, uh, um, okay, great. And then how about, uh, and this is really much more amongst the, the teen set, the prom scene and things like that. But sometimes those movies, those songs do make their way into, uh, into our wedding sets and uh, wedding requests. Animals by uh, Martin Garrix. No, I never had any good luck with that. I um, I, I guess I personally don't like the song. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I don't think maybe once I got a request for it, played it, didn't, uh, didn't explode. And I think that's the only time I ever played it. Sure. It's like, didn't pass the test at that point. Yeah. And if it wasn't a high in your list anyway, it's kind of like set aside unless people are calling yeah. for it. Right. All right, great. So let's go into some of the questions, some of the things that I asked you to prepare for, for, uh, for today. Okay. okay. So, um, uh, uh, everybody, uh, 
I don't know, one myself included, you know, when I kind of put these questions together, I think to myself, like, what would I, if I could have every DJ in the world, every, um, you know, a successful DJ in the world that I could ask a set of questions of that could make a difference for me when I'm out playing, what would I want to know? And so right. having a really good set of like, of hook songs that I know are tried and true and tested and just that really good set that I could pull out like things aren't going well I'm going to throw one of these out and having enough of them because sometimes it always feels like I'm burning up too many of them in the early part of the night right. um, I want to know what are the two songs and there's probably more than two but what are the two songs that you can think of that you can always count on to pack your dance floor yeah when I when I read that question I thought you know what I'll get, and obviously there's more than two but I figured let me give a an early in the night one and a late in the night one. Great. Uh, the early in the night one is Run Around Sue. That song has forever worked for me and I think it forever will. Uh, it is it's such a uh, an up tempo great oldies rock and roll song but it doesn't limit itself just to older guests getting up. I mean I'll play that early in the night at a wedding and. You know, everybody from the parents of the bride to the bride and her friends will get up and they'll dance to it and they'll sing along to it. And it's just I, I can count on my hand the number of times that song has failed me. And, and that's over thousands of weddings. And, that's and really maybe, great to know, yeah, because sometimes, yeah. you know, you look at the oldies or anything, bef the you know, 70s or before and go like, oh, I don't know. Is yeah. this is this too old? Is this out of, out of vogue now? Are they, are they not going to really dig on it? So that's really good to know as, to, as yeah. far as somebody to pull out and try again. Right. And then uh, a late in the night song that I love playing. Uh, and I, I actually, I guess I just assumed that everybody played this song. And I had the opportunity a couple years ago to uh, DJ for uh, uh, an industry friend and um, Dominic Sestito who who works with me and is, is a partner with me in the photography business that we have uh, he and I DJ the wedding we were driving home that night from Pennsylvania and he commented on that song and he said you know you played this song tonight and it packed the dance floor and he goes I don't think I've played that song in years I'm going to put it back in my set and it's J-Lo's Let's Get Loud oh wow and, yeah and that's... that song kills for me Jason it um First of all, it fits right in. It's it's that 130 BPM. Mm -hmm. It's got that same Latin dance type vibe that all of uh, Pitbull stuff has. And uh, it's got a couple of great breaks in the song. So if I want to do any kind of shout outs or hand clap or if the bride has, has gotten Hawaiian lays or maracas from us, I can use the breaks in that song to, you know, shake your maracas or something yeah. like that. But that song has killed for me. It's always killed for me, and it has never left my my uh, repertoire since it first came out. Oh, that's awesome! Now, see, yeah. I've got to add that to my list because that's what that's a that's a forgotten one that yeah. uh, that is that I've got to like like your friend said. I got to put it back in the set. Reintroduce it, and, and hopefully you have good uh, good luck with it. Yeah, awesome! Thank you for that. Um, so so let's move on from singles to actual sets because you know music works best in sets rather than just throwing things all kinds of different crazy directions. Right. Uh, and so what would what would be two of your favorite music sets? You just you just you get excited about getting ready to play those because you know that it's going to take them through, you know, they're going to have an experience for the next, you know, eight, nine minutes. Right. right. And, and you know what I, what you just said there is incredibly wise. I don't want to gloss over it. I want to go back and repeat what you said and underline it because thinking of music in sets is so much uh, better for a DJ to do, especially a newer DJ. Uh, but really for anybody, because if you think of, for example, the first set I'm going to give you, again, early in the night, um, springboarding off of Run Around Sue, a typical opening for me is Run Around Sue, Twist, uh, Old Time Rock and Roll. Okay. Typical three song early in the night. So for me to think of that as a set, that's 10 minutes long. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to play Run Around Sue, and then two minutes from now, I have to think of what song to play next. And then two minutes later, I have to think about what song to play next. Instead of thinking that, where you're making the programming decision every two to three minutes, right. if you think of songs in sets and you go, okay, Run Around Sue Twist, Old Time Rock and Roll, that's nine to ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have to make a decision until nine to ten minutes from now. You can really focus more on your emceeing skills and being on the dance floor. And just in case anybody is listening to this and saying, so you, what, you get pigeonholed and locked in? No, if I'm in the middle of the twist and I change my mind, I, I, I can do that. Right. But I, but I have the next song lined up. So right. you don't have to. So, yeah, thinking of music and sets is, is incredible. Run around, Sue Twist, old time rock and roll. Uh, like I said, uh, when I when I 
am not bombarded with requests from the bride and groom, that is a typical opener for me at a wedding, and it usually goes over great. Um, another set, uh, 80s music has been working huge for us. We um, we do a lot of 80s music, mm-hmm. a lot of that high hair band sing-along type stuff. Yep. So uh, a late night set that's been working for me a lot is... Uh, ACDC shook me all night long mm-hmm. um, living on a prayer which I, I say that with some caution because I'm in Jersey and we use living on a prayer a lot got a lot of Bon Jovi fans Bon Jovi literally lives about five miles from my office it's a regional favorite like Prince is so it here might be, it might be regional I, I do think though that it fits into that broader genre mm-hmm. of EDs high hair bands sing along type songs but I don't know if you're uh, reaction to that in a you know a Midwest town is going to be the same. So I'll go shook, shook me all night long into um, living on a prayer into the remix of Don't Stop Believing uh, of by Journey, which has has brought that song to me back into vogue because people can dance to it and sing along. Right, that's fantastic. And which uh, which uh, do you re- do you recall off the top of your head? Not to put you on the spot as far as remix, who remixed that, which remix it is. Somebody, I got a remix from somebody of that song years ago and for all i know it's a white label i don't even know if it was ever put out oh okay but it's worked very very well right right so go searching so in other words so then that, that's great what a great task now now go hunting for the remix it's out there somewhere in the big wild web so that's uh, that's fantastic. Those are really really great, uh, really great sets, and you can I can I can hear how they how the energy builds on them. Even though the BPM doesn't really build, the energy and the enthusiasm builds, especially right. completing with uh, "Don't Stop Believing," which is yeah. kind of one of those squeal songs I call like, "Oh, this one!" It's like everyone's yeah, and, anticipating it. And a lot of times, those will be my last three songs of the night because ending with "Don't Stop Believing" is a is a phenomenal end. So I can start that sometimes at, you know, if the, if the gig is ended at midnight at, at 11.50 and that three song set will take me right up to midnight. Isn't that wild? You know, and, and I, and this is what's really been interesting for me too, is to kind of get a barometer from other people's experience because uh, oftentimes I'll ask my, my couple like what they would like to have to be their last song for the night. Right. And for years and years, what felt like forever, well, forever since the beginning of my DJing really, uh, that's my forever, is that it's always been, well, you shook me all night long. Well, of course, it was that way in North Dakota when I played there a lot. It was that way in Minnesota. And then in the last probably four years, it's like, well, no, not that one. Don't stop believing. Like, duh, of course. Right. It's like right. kind of the new ending anthem. And it just right. strikes me as weird because I never expected that, you know, you don't think that's going to change. Right. Do you think the Sopranos had anything to do that with that? I, you know, Did I you don't know. It would be it would be tough. I mean, thinking of the the age groups that that came up with that is that what popularized "Don't Stop Believing" again, or brought it back me, into, or was it, was it a movie? Of, it was a combination of getting my hands on that remix right around the same time that The Sopranos uh, had that final episode, and it ended with "Don't Stop Believing." It ended on a dime. As a matter of fact, most people that were watching it thought their cable went out because it ended so um, it was so abruptly. You know, it was so abruptly. But I think it was the for me anyway. It was the combination of those two. And right around that time, we had a number of clients asking us to end. Now again, this could be a Jersey thing. Soprano was set in New Jersey, mm-hmm. so but we had a number of clients that asked us to end on, with "Don't Stop Believing," but cut it off like that. The same oh, way. to have yeah. that to create that same thing. Longer. I haven't gotten that request in forever, but that was a, a fairly common request right after the Soprano signed off. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah you, well, you know, and, and that would be something that really, really would be interesting to research because is to see like where where it's been used, uh, whether it's is it the Sopranos or was it a combination of that and maybe another film uh, or something like that? Because, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody was brought back to life like crazy after Wayne's World brought Wayne's it back, World, right. you know, and right. reintroduced it as a completely new and exciting, like, oh, I've never heard this before kind of song that was right. always a great song, but then like, you know, revived it. And there's been other cases where films have done that as, as well to see if, you know, if I, do, you, do we have time for a quick story about that? Sure. I, uh, when I first started DJing back in the day at Star DJs, they used to give us pre-mixed cassette tapes to play during dinner. It was like a 30 minute mix. And one of those mixes had Unchained Melody on it because this was pre-Ghost and nobody, you know, nobody ever asked for Unchained Melody. Nobody danced to it. Uh It was a beautiful older song, but you could play it during dinner. 
and nobody cared. Right. And then Ghost comes out, and that song went from zero to 60. Yeah. It came the way. It, it re-entered the charts. I think it went back. I don't know if it went back to number one, but I think it's the song with the longest gap between chart appearances. Uh-huh. Uh, and it's all because of the movie, and so we had to throw that dinner mix tape out because uh, <laughs> you, you know, got first of all, you had that as your wedding song half of the time, so you right. didn't want to eat it. Right. And even if you didn't, you wouldn't want to waste that song during dinner. So right, exactly. This was no longer uh, couldn't use it anymore. Or yeah. have people like getting stressed out, going, "I hope he's going to play it during the dance. I don't know why right. I play it right now." You know, having that conversation going on. Yeah, it's it's a while. You know, it's and it really speaks to like just being aware. Of you got to be aware of more than just like watching charts or even kind of watching your own music library. Like what's going on culturally, so that you right. can like be tuned in to kind of throw this out and be rewarded with the uh, the screams of delight sometimes when you throw out that right song at that right time that's so fitting that everybody just like wants to hear and you seem to intuitively know right. because you're right. uh, tuned in. That's really fun. Right. That's really Very fun. Good. That's a great story too. Yeah, because I remember I remember Ghost. It was everything was all Ghost. Oh, tell me more of the pottery scene. Da da da. Right. Right. So uh, so let's get back to our questions. Three songs from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, because this is there's tons of great music, and I'm feeling like that there are songs as newer DJs are coming up that a lot of these that are still that I think would still work, still be powerful, are being forgotten. And right. as as uh, wedding DJs, we can keep great music alive. Mm-hmm. That is just great music and reintroduce it to new generations. Um, and, the, and the older generations are going to dig it too. So what are three songs from the 50s, 60s, or 70s as a whole that still work for you? Great. And I'll you actually you said from, it in your first set. <laughs> but I'll, but if I'll there's three others. From, uh, I'll give you one from each decade. Uh, th- there's a 50s song that I will break out every once in a while. It's a great swing song, great doo-wop song. Uh, it's called Morse Code of Love by the Capris. Um, awesome. Uh, if you've got a crowd that loves oldies, it is a phenomenal swing song. They'll get out there. They'll do a Lindy to it. Uh, that's a, that's a great one. Awesome. As far as, as far as sixties go, respect by Aretha Franklin, yes. uh, is, is a phenomenal, it's not only a great dance song, but it's, it fits into that, what I call chick song and chick empowerment song. And let's face it, early in the night, a lot of times you have more women on the dance floor than men yep. anyway. So you might as well feed that fire by giving them something like respect and, you know, they can they can sing along and, and everything else. Um, and then, I mean, God, from the 70s, there's a million disco songs mm-hmm. that I love and that work great. Uh, so for me to pluck one out of the sky is, is hard to do. But September by Earth, Wind and Fire oh, yeah. is, is just a it's a phenomenal song. And transcends transcends generations. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think that one of the things that we have to remind ourselves as DJs is great music is really great music, you know? So if you bring one of these great oldies out that is just a great dance song. Right. They will hook because it's right. built into the song. It's it's yep. the song is a hook by itself. Like I want to dance to this. Right. right. It activates that part of the brain that says dance. Right. Right. right? Mike, Very thank true. you so much for being on the show. This is so awesome. I feel like we could go on for hours, and we probably could. Uh, and so uh, we we want to have you back uh, again so we can uh, we talk music because there's way more music than we can ever talk about in a half. I an love hour. it. This has been a lot of fun. You know, you didn't reference my little shrine behind me. Oh yeah, here. I'm sorry. I, it's like that's that's, okay. that's like the beautiful that's elephant in the room, and I didn't actually even bring it up. So please tell me. I just uh, referencing, and this is going to make a lot of people myself included feel old but next wednesday a week from today is the 30th anniversary of of purple rain the album the movie right. came out, i think a week or two later but um yeah 30th anniversary god does that make you makes me feel old anyway, that's crazy uh, of, of purple rain yeah yeah, that's really crazy. And you even have him during uh, the the time of his life that he was the artist formerly known as Prince. Yes, I've got the uh, uh, I I got the tambourine from a concert I went to, and uh, I've got some purple vinyl back there. That's my that's my little Prince shrine that I keep right behind me in my office. That's yeah. fantastic. That looks yeah. that looks beautiful. And what Prince songs do you still play? You know, it, I think one of the reasons why I love Prince is he doesn't have a lot of what I call gig songs, so I don't get sick of them. You know what I mean? Right. Like if, I a, if I was a Michael Jackson fan instead of a Prince fan, there'd be so many songs, Billy Jean and Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. There'd be so many songs that I was sick of, but I don't play a lot of Prince at my events. Uh, when I, If I do get a Prince request, the bride says, just play some Prince. I usually go with Kiss. Uh, I think it's his probably his most danceable and accessible song. I don't love the opening lyric at a wedding. You don't mm-hmm. have to be beautiful to be my girl. Right. I don't love that message so much. But 
Um, you know, 1999, sometimes it works, sometimes it <laughs> Well, it's hard um, to get people excited about partying like it's 1999 yeah. when that was so yeah. 15 years ago. Right. But I, I, I think that's one of the reasons why I love him so much because he doesn't – I don't get played out with him at, at my events. You know right. I mean? Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And that's a, a perfect place, a perfect place to end. Thank you awesome. so much for being on the show. Can't wait to have you yeah. back and talk music again. Uh, Mike Walter, uh, everyone. Now, what we would love to get is feedback from you. Please post on, right here on our YouTube page, post below, uh, any of the questions that I had asked, uh, that I had asked Mike love you to share. Okay. So like what are through two songs that you can always count on to pack the dance floor a couple of weeks ago, actually we had uh, Ed Pitts. He, uh, he posted that Mars pump up the volume was a song that all oh, still wow. packs the dance floor for him. And I've tried that and I haven't had a lot of great luck with it, but this makes me want to pull it out again. Cause maybe something has happened that has made that a cool song to dance to again. And I'm just not tuned in. Uh, and then Reed Hansen, he said Boogie Shoes. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Boogie Shoes. That's another one of those from the 70s you can throw on. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, Boogie Shoes. And come right out to it. So please post yours and and share with us uh, because it's like we all forget more great uh, dance music than we can uh, ever remember. So for this week, uh, this is Jason Jones on Mobile Music Thursday. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>